Hi folks, Thomas Henson here with thomashenson.com and today is another episode of Big Data Big Questions. You're probably wondering, where the heck am I? Actually, on the other side is my office. I thought this would be a good opportunity for me just to record in a different location. So, uh, new year, how about some new places to record? So, this is my gym that I'm continually building up over the years. So, uh, new view. So, today, what we're going to talk about, this is a Big Data Big Question comes in. And it's all around like how do you build a LinkedIn profile for a data engineer and specifically like how do I build it if I'm in that role today or how do I build it if I don't really have work experience are there some things that I can do all while staying honest right like we're not I'm not gonna give you any tips to say hey use this term even if you haven't done it right so those are all gonna be some tips for us and then make sure you stick around to the end um, I'll go through and show you what I've done on some of my LinkedIn profile too so I'll show you how I've stacked some projects and added some videos and other kinds of content that can help you stay in the community. We're going to break everything down and we're going to talk about specifically for your LinkedIn profile as a data engineer, the things that you can control. So the areas that you control, right? Um, there are some things you can't control and we'll talk about those a little bit. So the first thing is your title. So you can come up with an awesome title. Um, obviously try to keep it relevant, right? Like if, don't say, don't say you're a data engineer if you're not a data engineer, but you can be a data enthusiast. I've seen people talk about their data ninjas or you know, data gurus. I've even seen somebody for a while that um, actually right out of, I think they were, uh, they graduated like a year before I did and uh, their background was Excel and they were an Excel, I think they did Excel uh, ninja and that's how they got their first role. Um, uh, outside, it was, it was not a data engineering role, but it was a, uh, actually a developing role that came into like GIS or something like that. So. You can get creative with that. You can go through and you can also, you know, look at, you know, seeking opportunities. I've seen people that have put, you know, what they're seeking there. So control, you know, that title. The next area, so number two that you can control is your work experience to some extent, right? If you don't have work experience, there's some things you can't do there, right? Uh, you can put work experience from, come on, come on, open source projects, right? Like you can... You can become a contributor, you can move your way up uh, in, in those areas, and that can give you an opportunity to be able to add some things in there. Um, if you do have work experience, right, put those in there. Make sure you're putting your daily task, um, especially anything that's data related, like if you're doing stuff with SQL, if you're doing stuff, you know, with development, you know, whether, whether it be C Sharp or VB, you know, you can go back and look at my profile and, and see where I was a .NET developer, but put those tasks but then also find other tasks that maybe maybe you've done some research. So one of the things that I had to do was I had to do research on different things when we were moving. So like I said, I was a web developer moving into a data engineering role. Um, at the time, it was somewhat of a conscious effort, but not some as well too. I, I volunteered to get on a project. And so some of the things that I had to do was the research, right? So looking through Hortonworks, looking through Cloudera, um, the sandbox, going through and you know standing up you know our own uh, Hadoop platform and just testing those things out, that's all valid, right? Like that might not be my day-to-day -day task. I didn't do it the whole time I was there, but that was one of the things that I was tasked with doing. And you know, even as small as that sounds, put that on there. That, that gives you more experience. And you know, if somebody's looking at your LinkedIn profile and like, hey man, you know this person is moving into that role, they, they have this experience there. Another thing is if you attended any conferences there too. So that was another thing that I was very fortunate in my role where it was like, hey, love to get into this Mr. Customer. We, you know, we, we, uh, we signed up for a big project. Um, I, there's a couple of conferences that I needed to attend to get skilled up. You know, Hadoop Summit was some of them. Um, you've probably seen me wearing the, this one's, this one's not it, but you've seen me wearing some of the hoodies from Hadoop Conference. So we'll put those conference attendants in there, especially if you've spoken at any or uh, anything like that. Um, you can put uh, actually project stuff in there and you'll see it on my profile, but um, if you've done anything, even, even if you've made like a simple demo or something like that, now make sure it's customer, you know, it's, it, it's public facing, right? Don't put any, don't put any, any information from a company you're not supposed to, but, um, you can actually add projects to it. So whether it be a link to a blog post that you wrote for your company or for a project that you were on or videos. So I've made some videos on my personal site and you'll see those here when I show you my profile. Number three that you can control, right? So there's some things we can control about that work experience. Um, and then here we can control the education, right? So, you know, if you have a college degree, if you have, you know, anything, in, anything from that nature and even certification. So there's a little section for certifications. Those are things that you can control, right? You, and controlling that, I'm not saying put that you went to MIT if you didn't go to MIT, right? This is not going to help you, you know, short term, it might get you an interview, but that's not the, you know, that's not the long game we want to play. And that's, 
that's just not the right thing to do, right? <laughs> so make sure, you know, I'm, I'm talking about you can control it from the aspect of, hey, if you're planning on going to college, you have an anticipated graduation date, I would, I would hone in on that. And any, any kind of, you know, any kind of honors projects or denotations you've had in there, include that in your education section. So those are longer term, right? But I'm saying you can control it because you can, you can determine today, you know, what teams you're going to be able to on, you know, what, what you're going to do during your uh, college uh, and your education experience. It's a long-term thing, right? You know, most of them are, you know, four years, five years, however long it takes you. Some took me longer, so <laughs> maybe I'll do another video someday on how long it actually took me. Either way, you're going, you know, going through your education, you know, the factors that you can control, make sure you're putting that on there. Short term, we've talked about this good bit here, short term, still in education, you can control the certification. So, uh, we, you know, we know what my goals are for uh, 2019 as far as certifications and the certifications that I'm trying to knock out. Those are short term that you can do. So they have them with Pluralsight, they have them with uh, Coursera, uh, other education sites. And then there's also the vendor, right, specific, right? So uh, AWS, Hortonworks, Cloudera, specific certifications that you can go through and you can start adding, adding that. And that's an area where with work experience, it's a little harder with education, traditional, you know, for your college, a little harder, a little long term uh, to go. But those, you know, if you're really fighting to, you know, take that next role or move into move into a role, you know, whether it be within your company, whether you're trying to, you know, just, you know, you're a consultant trying to bring in more projects, go through some of those certifications, right? That's that can give you, you know, that's something that you can tackle and just depending on, you know, you your knowledge base. I mean, something anywhere from one month to six months, you can, you can knock out some of those certifications that are really going to help you build out that LinkedIn profile as a data engineer. So the last area that you can control, so you control the title, you can control the work experience, you can control your um, education and, you know, certifications, right? So activity, you have the most control and you can, you can go some, like you can pause this video and go post, you know, a relevant topic right now, assuming you have a LinkedIn profile, which if you don't, I, I think it's going to be very important to you. You should get one, but you can control that activity. You can control what you do from a hashtag perspective, what you want to put out there as far as like, Hey, I mean, if you go and look at my site, you'll see some of the things that I'm, that I'm learning and I'm not going through. So not only on my YouTube channel, do you, do you, does everybody get to kind of see behind the scenes of what I'm, what I'm looking at, but more importantly, um, you know, you can, you can start to, you know, mold that and, and pull that part into your education. So from my perspective, you can see, you know, for a good part of, you know, a good part of last year, I was really working on doubling down into deep learning and understanding what's going on in that community from a TensorFlow perspective, from a Keras perspective, from a PyTorch, or just like, what the heck does a CNN mean, right? <laughs> so you can see that, you know, I was slowly evolving, evolving my education and sharing that knowledge and same thing there. So you control that activity, but it's not a one-way street. So you're not, you're, you're not trying to just put stuff out there. You want to be involved in communities too. So you want to you know, like and comment on some of the some of your peers and other people around that are interested in the same things that you're interested in too. <clears throat> All right, about to roll into my last section. That was the mill person. All right, so talked about how you can put in, how you can you know add projects, add experience, and really uh, beef up your LinkedIn profile specifically for data engineers, machine learning engineers, Hadoop developers, that whole ecosystem, right? Um, now let's take a look real quick at my profile. So I promise that you, if you stuck around, I'd, I'd show you um, as we're kind of going through this. So just check out here on the experience. And this is what I was talking about. Whenever you're looking at, you know, what, what you've specifically done for a job and, you know, what's your day-to-day -day task are, this is where you get to put in, you know, your experience. And you can see here, you know, not only do I have my day-to-day -day task and even some of what my day-to-day -day task might be and what you know what my job description is but also like some other things that i've been involved with like conferences spoke at you can see here where i've like brought in projects so like you know whenever i do demos and some of these other things even on my my site it's good to be able to link it here and show those as projects right and show show people hey these are some of the things i've done same thing with conference so i've had some conferences i've spoke at at other places and this is kind of this is kind of how i roll you can see here too um you know from a Pluralsight perspective, you know, this is one thing that I, I got involved with Pluralsight and just I, I love to be able to have this on my profile. This shows that, you know, I'm in the industry, I'm taking, you know, I'm, I'm taking this to heart and not only am I doing this and, you know, furthering my knowledge, but I'm giving back and help, helping others too. So this kind of, you know, gives, gives me that opportunity to be able to do it. And so everybody here has that opportunity, right? Now, as you're learning things, document it, make videos, do, do things to be a part of the community and be able to show on your profile. Um, and then the next thing, the activity here. I mean, look at some of the activity, you know, 
you can see, you know, there's definitely, you know, something that I'm posting, right? Like I'm not posting, you know, maybe I'm shooting a video today in a gym, right? But I'm not posting, I'm not over, you know, over rotating too much on topics outside of my interest, right? My interest is for data engineers, machine learning engineers, and the data science community. And so that's what I'm posting. So I'm, I'm posting things here and I'm also actively, you know, liking and commenting on others' posts just to kind of have that communication and kind of have, you know, make it, make it not just a one-way conversation. So um, that's just some tips and that's just some ways that I've, you know, crafted my uh, LinkedIn profile. I hope that you'll go out and, uh, you know, find me on LinkedIn, you know, let's connect um, and just, you know, build out your profile. And, you know, this gives you an opportunity to, as you're looking and building out your profile, you can see some gaps or some holes in areas that you need to shore up, whether it be in work experience, certifications, education, or just activity. So um, if you have any questions, make sure you uh, put them in the comment section here below. Go subscribe and ring that bell so you never miss an episode and you're always notified whenever we do an upload here on Big Data, Big Questions.